नमस्ते वी आर नाउ कम टू द सेकेंड पार्ट इन द हार्ट टू हार्ट वॉल्यूम फर्स्ट फन ऑगस्ट थर्ड नाइनटीन एटी सेवन आई हैव सम मोर थाट्स इन कनेक्शन विथ वॉट आई सेड यस्टरडे समबडी सजेस्टेड यस्टरडे दैट ओबीडियंस इज बिकॉज इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द फियर प्रिंसिपल येस ऑफ कोर्स इनडायरेक्टली इट मे बी सो बट द प्रॉब्लम रियली सीम्स टू बी नॉट इवन फ्रीडम नॉट इवन प्लेजर फियर बट द इंट्रूजन ऑफ वॉट वी थिंक इज द सिंस आई आई डोंट नो आई मे बी रॉन्ग बट ओबीडियंस वॉज वेन आई वॉज अ चाइल्ड देन अ बॉय वी हैव फाउंड दैट और रादर डिसोबीडियंस इन चिल्ड्रन हैज ऑलवेज कम फ्रॉम इंटरफियरिंग इन देयर एक्टिविटी विच दे थॉट वॉज एन्जॉयमेंट whether it was walking with bare feet in puddles and catching a cold or eating too many strawberries or putting their hand into the fire sometimes what people think is enjoyment you stop them from or try to stop them from doing it they don't want it stopped it it is very simple to it appears very simple so we have his nothing new it is very old concept that either we have what is good or we have what is pleasant to do you know your wonderful great old philosopher plato had said this long ago the good is on one side the pleasant on the other side which would you choose from a child to the oldest living person they would choose the pleasant in fact if you study human nature the longer we live the more we have become addicted to the pleasant because there is a fear as we grow older that we are not destined to live much longer enjoy life while we can so the old people do more foolish things than the young i mean this is a matter of observation it's nothing new and that's why you find old drunkards people marrying for the 17th time at the age of 75 when they can hardly have any fun in the normal sense of the word you see but when you think you are having fun that's what seems to be important it's not whether it's really fun because you have known them when you were children yourselves you were eating berries which were sticky and covered your teeth and gave you prickles and you thought it was fun because some big boy said it was fun hey come on vera why not we go into woods and pick strawberries stickle berries oh it's lovely you think it was fun then we come home and vomit all over the place and mother says what the hell were you doing oh but mommy they said it would be fun then we are honest enough to say it they said it would be fun but as we become older we lose that honestly because we don't want to expose the fallacy in our own mental makeup i thought it was fun it is fun we are you to say no this becomes later our attitude i like to sit with somebody next to me why should you interfere in it i like to suck a chocolate while i am meditating what's wrong with it think like that you know so we each one develop our own sense of fun it need not be fun most often it is not because the consequences can be from the ridiculous to the tragic you know we meet every day at least i meet every day persons who come with tragedy in their faces in their in their here all out consequence of having had fun in life nobody suffers tragedy by doing what is right and what is not fun i am yet to see a philosopher coming to me and telling me oh chari you know they don't come they don't need to it is these young people and not so young people the old people who are addicted to their own idea of fun whether it is out of a bottle or in bed it doesn't much matter you see and one day they come with tragedy and it's hardly possible to help them any more and when you say well i am so sorry because you are beyond repair what can you do i mean it hurts me more than anybody else to say it but every day we have people like that and then 
they weep and they lose whatever life force is in them for them the sun no longer shines there is no more the sea and they are counting days now i am not talking of illnesses imposed by nature on us like a child suffering diabetes we say nature but that is the past life it is the karma of the past the sanskaras of the past that we have brought with us precisely because in one life it could not be worked out we have done so much funning that the consequence could not be worked out in one life one sickness was not enough when cancer was not enough when mds was not enough so again and again we suffer you see so it is this pleasure principle you see or what we think is pleasure what is ruining human beings whether you are white or black male or female rich or poor it doesn't matter everyone thinks he is having fun each in his own way somebody has a horse and breaks his neck he is having his fun you see and then when he has his fifth cervical vertebra broken and he is a spastic in bed for the rest of his life they blame god they blame christianity they blame destiny what is this god you talk of who can put my husband in bed like this chari for the next 57 years well god didn't tell you to ride a horse another man goes to the mountains year after year every time he falls and breaks his leg in the same place but you cannot stop him until he breaks his neck then his young widow comes and asks chari how can god be love all religions say god is love if there is a god should this have happened yes but god didn't ask you to go up into the dolomites and break your crazy neck of year after year once should have been enough you know you watch animals you put an obstruction they don't try to butt their way through it they just walk around it or go underneath or jump over it even ants even rats but we are so sen- too sensible you see we are too well educated we are too much philosophic we have too much high standards of living to follow nature and nature's laws and nature's signals but we say no no we can who can hurt me i am hb who was destined from the beginning to of whom isa and enoch and moses spoke how dare a mountain break my neck or a horse how should i get ulcers from a bottle of whisky or mds when we get it then we remember or we are told very very tragically my friend you are not infallible you are not above the law you are white tall strong rich but not beyond the law so you see this is the tragedy of the modern existence that we have begun to think that we are beyond all laws we may be beyond certain laws like the big nations think they are beyond all laws you see yes they can shoot and kill everybody else who more can they be do they are brutes you see if ability to kill a million or 2 million people by pressing one button is all that you think of civilization god help you but this is the arrogance of the west you see that we have the latest weapons we have the latest radar technology we have the youtubes and ufos and you don't know what else and we can pulverize any nation in 3 seconds flat but remember there is somebody watching from above also you see and he is not impressed with our red buttons and our atomic weapons and our radar technologies he is not impressed he says stupid i gave you the intelligence to do this with one transmission i can put your brain out of axis and you wouldn't know where the button is you wouldn't know where you are and what you are and who you are you would go screaming into the ocean this is not an empty thing i am saying you see because babu ji said that it would take a cent one second to make harmless all the weaponry in the world nothing would work it is a good thing that such things exist such persons can exist because in that lies our hope for the future but we can we have to remember that if you want a cent to act for you and say well these are poor people they are nice people they are innocent people 
I will not allow a maniac sitting somewhere across the ocean to press a button and kill them. He must think we deserve his interference into our existence. He must feel, you see, that we are part of him and he cannot allow you to be destroyed and then he holds up his little finger and all the powers of the world are stilled but we must deserve it. Otherwise, he says, well, what does it matter to me, you see? Red buttons, they can have a few more. It will also give them three more green buttons and three blue buttons and let them play around like the casino musical toys you see who can kill whom easily couldn't fire so this is what deservingness means are we trying our best to live as master wants you to live and we are he is sure to protect us guide our guide must cherish us everything you see but if we say well you know good old babuji nice man always never says no to anything you know in his 10 uh, ten maxims comments they never say what we should not do there are no do's and don'ts in sahaj mark i have heard this uh, repeated so many thousands of times i am frightened of those 10 maxims because they are giving the wrong impression that in Sahaj Mark there is freedom to do what we wish. Whereas Babuji had said very very cryptically so often that if we have freedom it is only freedom to do what is right. And I mean obviously you cannot have freedom to do what is wrong. When you walk on the streets you are free to walk where you should walk. Nobody can stop you. No power on earth can stop you. But if you want to talk in the center of the street where the cars are passing or against the red light, along comes one of these beautiful grey vehicles in Denmark, Polity, you see, and very politely he will say, Dem, you may say, no, no, I can walk where I choose, he says, not while I am around. If you persist, you may have a free ride in that car of his. So you see, freedom to do the right God himself cannot take that away from us. Freedom to do what is wrong even God cannot give us. So it is stupidity to say, Master never said this. Master permitted this. Master never said, don't do that or don't do this. Master was compassionate, merciful, kind. Yes, my master was, is and will always be merciful, compassionate and kind. But I don't want my master to use his mercy and compassion because those are for criminal flailers. A child which is doing what is right and coming through life, well, doesn't need anybody's mercy or compassion. I don't need anybody's mercy or compassion because I haven't needed anybody's compassion. That comes after I am becoming such a hardened criminal, so useless, so incapable of helping myself, then somebody has to come and lift me up out of compassion and mercy. I would rather stand on my two feet and be led by the hand royally like a son walking behind the father, you see. Come, my son, we walk together hand in hand, like lovers that we are, who wants compassion. Why should I think of mercy? I mean, that is for people who have fallen so low. It's like a man who has fallen drunk on the streets and four people have to come and put him on a stretcher. And take him away and we feel sad you see that such a thing should happen we feel compassionate too we feel sympathy oh what a poor thing this man is that he has to be carried away don't we feel it and will not god hang his head in shame if he has to come here and lift us up and clean us and put us on a stretcher and take us away with four of his assistants walking behind him my son I did not create you for this. I created you to walk proudly on earth, the master on the earth having dominion all over, lordship over all, but right over nothing except me. I am your father. From me you can ask anything. Don't seek anything from this universe in which I have put you that is there is there as foundation on which you should exist. 
like an artist canvas you see nobody can paint without a canvas can you paint in air not at all so the universe exists but not for our enjoyment or for our pleasure it exists for me to put my foot upon something to sounds walk and for me to catch its god think that is take from the universe what my god has prepared for my existence and lead life full of heart full of joy joy fills day and they fall unconscious miserable and you say but i told you don't touch that i have i not given you enough to eat and have i not given you enough to eat and to drink and to be happy and healthy why should you experiment those those things which are not for you and you say no no son of the master don't you think there is an inherent human tendency to experiment don't you think it is part of the freedom of man that he should experiment and find out for himself and not just go by what people tell him but he says i have no time to wait when you are having your experiments i will keep walking when you are finished with your experiments if i still in sight run after me what should i do if you are lost so far away that i can catch up with you perhaps my father in heaven will send somebody else later on wait for him so this is the tragic situation that we are facing you see and will face so long as the human being only thinks of his pleasure of his freedom of his rights forgetting his duty his necessity to grow and his responsibilities we always want rights without responsibilities we always want enjoyment without having pain it is not possible unfortunate but that is how it goes you see god created things with two sides like a coin pleasure pain if you have this you have this too you can't avoid it either you have both or you have neither therefore the wise recognizing this truth said no pleasure then i have no pain the fool says oh well you know i can have only this side of the coin you are damn fool you are a philosopher you don't know reality you see you don't have education you are after all one of those wise guys from the east who are talking of reality and sitting and meditating with your eyes closed what can you know that a coin can have one side always facing up try it after 6 months he comes running and asks my friend what should i do now well even if you put the same thing on the other side of the coin it is not going to work it's all right in a gambling den two heads not in the in the law of god so the philosopher the spiritual leader the master doesn't tell you not to enjoy life you see he only says be aware because today you enjoy tomorrow you are going to suffer and this is a foolishness which the indian mystics have done too they sought pain you see and then comes pleasure in some form or the other and again they are back on the wheel we made the same mistake there instead of going the way of pleasure we went on the way of pain lying naked on a bed of nails under the hot sun for 3 years 15 years 25 years and ending up to stinking mess of rotten flesh that is not the way either so my master never said try to embrace pain he never asked us to bear pain he never asked us to go after pleasure he said avoid both come with me what have you to do with this or this what i have i give you is neither pleasure nor pain it is that which is real which alone will sustain you which alone will carry you to the end and which will be ever part of you without harming your interest materially spiritually morally physically in any way so the alternative brothers and sisters is not whether we should have pleasure or pain there is no alternative we have neither pleasure nor pain at one stroke we do away with life so it is this that sahaj marg offers and those who will accept think over it and see it sometimes a little difficult to understand that such a thing can exist 
that there need not be either pleasure or pain in life it is a difficult concept same thing applies to health if you look for exuberant health you are going to suffer exuberantly later you see that's what happens when people take horse riding and mountain climbing fitness programs it is all right when you are young 18 to 25 nice jogging shoes jogging suits and life seems so beautiful and springy you see foggy morning sunny morning rainy morning and there they go lopping their way like a lone wolf through the jungles and one morning we fall and we break our knee and our fitness program has come to a permanent end not only our fitness program but our fitness too because thereafter we need an artificial knee cap crutches for the next 18 months i cannot any more ride a bicycle i cannot any more climb up the staircase and i have to go to geriatric home at the age of 26 so these are foolishnesses that we indulge in you see god did not ask us to be superlatively healthy or superlatively wise he said be with me don't worry what you are that is the result of your past i am prepared to accept you as you are provided from now on you follow me and do what i tell you to do in the faith the implicit faith that i cannot tell you to do anything which is bad for you because it is not in my nature to do harm to you or to cause hurt to you or disappoint you so my children this is what god says you see come unto me try it but sometimes the very eternity of god is working against that poor old fellow we say well what is the hurry no 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 i don't mean to say that babu ji will ever tell us lies i am sure he is doing us good things and you know what is good for us to but why not we enjoy life for a few more years and then go to the old man then we find out it's too late so you see as babu ji used to emphasize now and here begins the journey of evolution not day after tomorrow not after i have had my next marriage and the fun consequent on that now and here if now and here we are not prepared for it the door may close and then we can knock on it forever forget the bible you know i knock and it shall be opened unto thee it's not so easy this is a door we have to walk through when it is open it may open once in 10000 years once in 50000 years and perhaps never again for eternity who knows because we need god god does not need us therefore brothers and sisters think over these things carefully try to evaluate what your freedom is worth what your health is worth what your money is worth what even your wonderful western education and intelligence is worth is it also wonderful as it seems wrapped up in silver foil and gold foil with a tricornered hat on your head phd is it worth it because i know many phd's who were drunkards who were drug addicts and who ultimately end up nowhere same thing with doctors same thing with lawyers i mean name them and we have them from the heights of the respected professions so being a doctor or a lawyer or a psychologist or anything doesn't seem to make us immune from these foolishnesses because human nature has not been changed don't try to change the vessel try to change what is inside what is the way work on your inside hitherto you have been working on your outside you see polishing your face snipping your hair putting muscles on your calves and thighs that is the great tragedy you know that the western culture is based on the greek idea of beauty and health the greeks have done enormous harm to the western culture excuse my saying it and we have not forgotten that lesson even today it is they who are to be blamed well they thought they have discovered something new and they left their beautiful statues in marble you know venuses and the praxiteles and what not wonderful statues i have also would like to have one of them in my house but 
आई वुड नेवर लाइक टू बी लाइक वन ऑफ दो स्टैचूज फॉर हेवन सेक्स बल्जिंग मसल्स वॉट ऑन अर्थ फॉर यू लुक अगली यू सी देर वॉज अ सेंसिबल मैन इन जर्मनी आई यूज टू रीड अबाउट हिम थर्टी ईयर्स है गो इन द ह्यूमन प्रोफाइल फॉर हिम द चेस्ट द स्टमक एंड द नोज वेर ऑल ऑन वन स्ट्रेट लाइन वर्टिकल ही सेड दिस इज हेल्थ बट टूडे वी हैव द फिगर ऑफ द हाउंड यू सी चेस्ट आउट स्टमक इन सो दिस इज द ट्रेजिडी ऑफ ग्रीक कल्चर and if you study the philosophy of the greeks it is equally absurd it's very nice i am also fascinated when i read you know timaus for instance there are so many kernels of truths in plato in all the others who followed him but one has to judge a system by which it has made us not just by what is what it has promised us and if one is to judge by the ideas of platonic philosophy and the greek ideas of beauty and health i wouldn't give many marks to that system so let us forget the past let us forget our pride in the past let us forget our pride in our nation our nationality in our color of our skin in our intelligence in our francs or dollars or deutsche marks or kroner and even it be you see let us come down to reality what is it that i can take with me when i go even the almighty american dollar i cannot fit into where i am going you see i have no pocket which will hold it the golden eagle of the olden days you see a 20 dollar piece i am told it sells for 5000 dollars today just one single gold piece will you not allow me find a place where you can put it if you can take it so i was very happy when hans nakergaard yesterday said we can take nothing from here you know they say that nothing can be taken from here not even power not even wisdom master has said so many times my master babu ji maharaj has said so many times that he would have to leave his power behind when he left then what do we carry sanskar so let us not make sanskaras what do we leave behind for that also i must congratulate hans nakergaard with considerable intuition we leave behind our love when we leave our children they are the products of our love so the neighbor is another snotty child you know always running loose but to us it is a symbol of what our love has produced when the artist leaves his pictures it is not a painting he leaves behind it is his love for nature that he leaves behind to admire it as anything else would be stupid and to give form and content to something in which there can be no form and content art does not have form and content i am amazed at the stupidity of these western art critics trying to read things into lines and circles and forms it's all right for the psychologist poor people they don't know so much about these things you see but for an artist who is supposed to have intuitive perception into the laws of existence how dare we make such mistakes so when we in our turn see these paintings and admire them what is it we admire not what he has produced here which is canvas and paint and turpentine it is the way he has resonated with existence and that resonation or resonance produces something there you see and which we vibrate with again like when you pluck one string another with the same pitch vibrates in resonance and if there is a third one it to start vibrating this is the miracle that happens when we look at art when we look at anything that love has produced you see therefore women are able to admire little babies not the men so much it is part of women it is part of their existence it has come out of them you see it is a manifestation of their own being that is there and how else can it be looked at except with love and what does a master leave behind there is a famous eastern concept you see that we have the physical sex organs for producing the physical progeny and we have something here in the heart which is also called for lack of better word yoni yoni in sanskrit means a female regenerative organ 
hridaya oni is it is called you see the heart's female region generative organ the master puts himself his seed into that and therefore if we receive that seed in the way we should receive it the miracle happens that each one of us becomes a child of the master in every sense of the word therefore it is the seeding process as babu ji said so often it don't think i don't think many people wondered what is this seeding business that he is talking about he could not speak about it because like i said yesterday he could not talk about certain concept but this is the fact that a scent creates through your generative organ in the heart with the rest of your body as he has no concern for him it doesn't exist and that when we open to him he puts himself into us in seed form and ergo there comes one more child of the master now this is what he wished how much he achieved only he knows so you see the physical fa- act of procreation as there is this old wonderful american song the bees do it the birds do it so what so wonderful about men and women doing it it's a crazy thing in any case you see it is meant for the propagation of nature not for pleasure i mean you just have to look at some animals coupling on the streets maybe dogs don't you feel ashamed instinctively and turn your head away don't you well i always feel ashamed why should we feel ashamed because it is not something that should be publicized done in public the animals know no better but when you walk through hyde park and you find the same thing happening among human beings it is called freedom oh chari we live in a free society you know the modern youth they like to do these things i mean they don't feel any shame what they are to be ashamed of so we have lost that sense of shame so this is the problem you see that the human beings of today are trying like mad to create in the wrong ways to create some sort of ecstasy in themselves through alcohol drugs and sex trying to create children trying to create so many things all ending in tragedy mismatch patterns drawn towards each other by lust momentary passion and then after 6 months follows the inevitable divorce and they are sad they are miserable they say how can this thing happen to me he loved me so much or at least he said he loved me so much where is he so you see philosophy says spirituality says wait when the spring season comes of course there are flowers and fruits on the garden on the trees in the orchards but you wait until the fruit is ripe you don't immediately go and grab the raw ones and start eating and then start purging diarrhea you wait for them to ripen isn't it so human beings must learn to wait for everything to ripen love must ripen friendship must ripen you meet somebody on the streets who is very nice and he comes to call on you the next morning you are flattened and he says give me 5000 kroner you say of course why not there was a case right here in denmark where one fellow like that with a nice handsome face tall he ran away with something like 22000 kroner all because the people thought he was nice handsome tall he couldn't be a cheat they never saw him again denmark is a small country even here they couldn't find him again and of course the money is gone and in the meantime he must have changed his field of activity you see so that brings us to the next subject judge not from the externals that a man looks handsome and to be trusted doesn't mean he is really to be trusted he could be the biggest crook you know wait and see how long should i wait well until you are sure naturally well can you bite every raw fruit on the tree then it will no longer ripen you see it's finished so you cannot bite it no no can't i bite a small bit every day and then see no touch it feel it there are ways of knowing you see bite it only when you are sure it is ripe so we have to curb our tendency to taste the fruits of life offered plentifully you see hanging from every tree looking out of every window staring at us out of every glossy in the magazines and then we have to wait 
what is there behind this face that i see what is there behind this fruit when you go to pick mushrooms you know how tragic it can be if you pick the wrong one you can be dead and you don't eat it to see if it is poisonous would you eat it to see if it's poisonous and then put it away you wouldn't be able to pick the next one so you see eating tasting is not the way of tasting waiting and tasting and enjoy biting and tasting and enjoying come after the tasting process is complete which means wet therefore spiritual loss says wet how long well eternally if necessary for for your welfare not for mine so the whole thing is you see in spirituality and like in the laws of man we have person who says well even the testing you did not do i have tested everything for you come with me take what i tell you is good for you do want i do what i tell you is good for you and you don't have this problem here you are testing and testing and taking these risks that is what the master's life is about you see to prevent us from falling into these pits into these gutters there we cannot rise again perhaps all that he says is i don't want anything from you what is it that you can give me which i already don't have if i needed anything i wouldn't be here with you you see i would be sitting there part of you so don't make the mistake of thinking the master comes to us to take something from us of course he may make jokes and i have a bit of ice cream and chocolate and sometimes nice cakes with almonds that's part of the fun you see of life permitted fun no more remember always that he is the giver we are always the receivers like i told you yesterday i am and shall be eternally the disciple of my master for me there can be no question of giving to my master what is it i can give him even when i am the perfect as he is what can i give him after all he made me perfect what can i give him the tree gives the fruit the fruit cannot give back something and say oh my darling tree take something back out of me it's not the law so let us remember that the master comes to give what does he come to give not health not wealth not wisdom these things are stupid things futile things he comes to give us himself put himself into our hearts in seed form watch us grow like some of us who are interested in gardens we plant the seed and then how impatiently we wait for it to grow into the tree that we hope it will be and if it doesn't come we are so sad about you see i remember once when i was in europe for the first time i think in 1949 most of you would not have been born i bought some bulbs tulip bulbs from amsterdam i was very fond of them i bought a dozen of dozen at an outrageous price something like a dollar each in those days but it was only 2 rupees or 3 rupees the dollar you see still it was too much for a bulb 2 nippies then i could buy 6 kilos of potato at home well that was one of the foolishnesses when i took them home and planted them not one came you see we are not all that good even as gardeners because nature must cooperate with us now when i go to the, with the master he is the personification of he is nature what else can he be you see all cooperation to uh, come to me i don't mean that i should take some tulip bulbs and plant them in madras now i know it will not work because the lower nature that we call the environment will not cooperate you see the soil is not right the climate is not right the wisdom comes don't try to transplant something from here to there it won't work enjoy it where it is and go go on now this is an idea not to much of enjoyment or ecstatic pleasure it is a sign of possessiveness that we put to take something back from somewhere to some to see it every morning can you keep the sun from rising can you say wow stop 
आई वॉन्ट टू पेंट द ग्लोरियस सनशाइन द सन विल लाफ एंड से वेल पेंट मी इफ यू हैव द एबिलिटी वेल आई एम अराउंड यू सी कम स्टार्ट अर्ली प्रिपेयर यूर कैनवास एंड कैच मी एट द मोमेंट आई राइज दैट्स वाई दैट्स वॉट आर्टिस्ट डू दे डोंट ट्राई टू स्टॉप द सन सो वी हैव टू कैच दैट मूवमेंट विच इज़ फॉर अवर बेनिफिट एंड द ओपनिंग इन टू द इटरनल लाइफ एंड एज आई सेड अ लिटल अर्लियर इट इज़ हियर एंड नाउ नेवर इन द फ्यूचर इफ वी डू दिस थिंग्स इफ वी फॉलो द मास्टर इन एवरी वे अडोरिंगली लविंगली फेथफुली देन ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स वी शैल हैव अ चांस ऑफ लिविंग बिहाइंड अस अवर लव टू अदरवाइज we have we only live our frustrations our hatred our miseries our sickness our disease and and they are washed away you see so this is the promise of sahaj mark that you receive his love the seed of his love in your heart you become love and you have the possibility of leaving love behind when you go so please remember this and try to guide your lives in the appropriate way so that this promise can become an actuality by his grace here we conclude the second lecture fun the next in a narration video we will commence the third lecture invertendo which was delivered on august 3rd 1987 and at copenhagen denmark thank you for listening